Hi folks and welcome to CNB. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. We have so much coming your way. You've already had a little glimpse of it at the start. You have seen these two bikes. And uh, you know what? We've been wanting to do this for some time now. Get some of the Triumph models in for you. Talk about them because the brand's been now in the market for a few months and it's starting to pick up some traction. So we decided to go with two different categories of bikes and so which is why we have a classic and we also have something a little bit sportier what of course Triumph likes to dub as a roadster and so uh, that's the Speed Triple and this one is the Thruxton. So we've got these two for you. Besides that, plenty more coming up as well but uh, you know what, we've got the bikes here, they're ready to go. Let's start off with these bikes and joining me on that ride is Bala. When you walk up to these bikes, it's an instant love triangle of sorts. While one is classic and rides with style, the other is mean and implies speed. No matter which bike you pick, there is no dearth of love. From classics to roadsters to super sports, Triumph has managed to offer almost every kind of motorcycle to the Indian buyer. Ever since Triumph surprised us by launching 11 bikes in one go at its market debut in November 2013, the brand has got great attention. The company says it now has over 600 bookings and has nine dealerships in its network. So it's really high time we got our hands on some of these beauties, right? Now, while the Bonneville and the Street Triple might be the hot favourites in the Triumph range, these two, the Thruxton Cafe Racer and the Speed Triple too, have their share of fans. Bala has the Thruxton today. So let's indeed start with the classic, shall we? Named after the high-speed British circuit where Triumph enjoyed great success in production racing, the Truxton follows the tyre tracks of the legendary 1960s Truxton T120R. Although based on the Bonneville, the Truxton's cafe racer looks give it a distinct appeal with a typical single seat. And the bike also tends to look much larger than the Bonnie. The rear cover comes off to give you a pillion seat. The low and narrow handlebars are angled towards you with the classic bar and mirrors. Twin instrument pods with analog dials add to the classic appeal. Over to Siddharth for the speed triple. One glance and the bike gets you. It captures you. Ensnares you in its gaze. Staring you in the face with its bug-eyed twin headlamps, the speed triple roadster doesn't try to hide its attitude. Packed with more power and muscle than the popular street triple, the example of the bike with us is a Roadster, which is dressed in this killer electric blue matte finish. Though Triumph says that now it's only going to be available in black, red and white. The bodywork on the bike is designed to show off its muscle, especially over the large well-sculpted fuel tank. The aggressive hunched forward stance and the twin silencers beneath the short stubby tail section catch your eye almost instantly. The instrumentation is part digital, part analog and comes packed with programmable gear change lights, a lap timer, a trip computer and a fuel gauge. But that's not all. When you start to hit the higher revs, the blue LED light strip that lights up instantly on the panel, almost goading you to keep the performance quotient nice and high. Now the Cafe Racer styling is now familiar thanks largely to the Royal Enfield Continental GT that came out earlier last year and now with this uh, Thruxton you kind of get that similar kind of feel to it especially with those bucket seats uh, so that kind of appeals to you the old British kind of classic Triumph associated brand on the Thruxton. Very classic looks in fact uh, Bala when you think Triumph as a brand for me anyway and I know a lot of people in India it just goes back to that whole heritage and so when you think of the brand you do think of bikes that look like that you know you want to see a little bit of chrome the irony though it is the bike that's with me that uh, actually is the highest selling model for the brand now globally so you don't really see as many of those as you see uh, of these of course in india all of this is still fairly new and so uh, when you talk about these bikes i think both these bikes play a good role in creating a good brand image 
The Street Fighter looks though that you see on this particular model, Triumph was the first company to really go big on Street Fighter. Now I think pretty much every global brand bala has one of those in yeah. their portfolio. Interesting but color also. I mean that one really appealing but this military kind of green feel to it with this nice little golden line in between kind of appeals and kind of is in line with the overall classic look that it has. But that matte blue is something that I've been eyeing for a while now. It is very sexy and you're right that uh, green very British. Very nice. Having spent a lot of time on the Royal Enfield Continental GT, the riding stance on the Thruxton wasn't too unfamiliar. Fortunately, the forward lean over the tank to the handlebars, along with the placement of the foot pegs, make the riding stance less taxing on the arms. But I'm still not sure if long distance riding might be such a great idea on the Thruxton. The bike's simple tubular steel construction keeps it very steady even at low speeds despite its weight. With 41 mm forks and chrome rear adjustable shocks, the ride is firm and handles well in poor road conditions. But tight cornering isn't so easy with the placement of the handlebars making it a tad difficult. Braking though inspires lots of confidence with the front wheel fitted with a big 320mm single disc on the 18-inch wheels and a disc on the 17-inch rear wheels as well. A similar engine to the Bonville, the 865cc parallel twin on the Thruxton turns out 67 bhp and has 69nm of peak torque. The 5-speed gearbox is precise and the throttle response is smooth and predictable and getting to three digit speeds doesn't take too much of an effort. The Speed Triple is built on a modern twin tube twin spa frame with agile and sharper handling and doesn't feel as heavy as it looks at 214 kgs. For a motorcycle with so much of a sports bike character, it was surprising to see how the upside down forks on the Speed Triple with adjustable rebound and compression damping took to bad roads without one flinch. The braking is spot on with the Brembo's radial four piston calipers with ABS doing the job really well. The riding position is quite aggressive and more sporty with the low handlebars, high footrests and the rider's seat sculpted deep for a forward leaning position. But you can sit up in a conventional riding posture too. On the Speed Triple, the engine is a different powerhouse altogether with a three-cylinder 1050cc engine. There's 134 bhp on offer with 111 nm of peak torque as well. You get ample power lower down the rev range too. The six-speed gearbox is quick and making the bike snarl is a finely tuned 3 into 2 exhaust which also boosts the engine's torque. On the downside, the clutch lever is a bit hard and takes some getting used to and the engine does generate quite a bit of heat in stop-go city traffic. So on a hot and humid summer day like this, that's not fun. The classic Thruxton is priced at 6,70,000 rupees ex-showroom Delhi and will appeal to those looking for the classic British motorcycle with its retro cafe racer looks and want to make a statement. It sounds nice too, is agile and smooth and makes for a fun riding experience. The more powerful Speed Triple is priced at 10,31,000 rupees, ex-showroom Delhi. It's definitely quite the naked bike with lots of sporty character and totally killer looks. So while we told you before that both these bikes offer different shades of riding that you will love, our matchmaking advice is to pick the one that's closer to your personality rather than simply your budget.